He wanted to still play armchair detective. That's all. All right, sit back, relax, and enjoy the conclusion of Murders in the Air. That's ridiculous. Why would I kill him? I'd say a third of a fifty billion dollar fortune is a pretty good reason to knock somebody off. You know, if you'd only sign that new will. But I didn't know about the new will. I wasn't here when Grandfather told us all about that cloning scheme, or whatever it was. Uh, no. No, about your story. Can you tell me again? I've forgotten some parts of it. Okay. I had to crawl at a snail's pace down that long country road from town. Wind and rain lashing me through the windshield. It was like driving through a hurricane. I could hardly see. When I had finally gotten to the bridge that goes to the estate, I had to stop. The rising waters from the nearby stream had torn it to pieces. But luckily, I remember a fallen tree about a mile or so. No, he's a player as a kid. Climbed across that, walked inside, and got here just in time to see Grandfather murder. No, that's a good story, but you know, it sounds a little bit rehearsed. <laughs> the truth, I swear. Uh, but no matter how good your story is, you're still not off my suspect list. And just who else is on that list, Mr. Davis? Everyone in this house, except uh, Miss Van Zandt and Miss Kathy Collins. You know, you had a lot to gain if your grandfather only lived a few more minutes. As it turns out, they're left in the cold. Especially me. Lois has other clients, and now I'm among the unemployed. I'm sure once the estate is settled, we can arrange a generous severance check for you. Take out of your portion. Mother and I will pass. So will I. Nothing personal, of course. Of course. Mr. Davis, what do we do now? Simon Stewart reminded me. We could play some bridge. <laughs> well, ignoring that, uh, we well we have to uh, notify the police somehow. Um, see, I think we'll take you take me to your car and we'll drive into town. We'll have to come bridges out as well. Uh, they'll fly in by helicopter, take your grandfather's body to the coroner's office, get everyone's statements, and then once a homicide detective is assigned to the case, I'm out of here. But you're a detective too, and you're right here when the murder occurred. You have a better chance of solving this case than anybody else. That's a good idea, but you seem to have forgotten that my employer has died a couple hours ago. I can pay you to stay. I don't have the money yet, but if you're willing to wait. You know what? You're on, kid. I think you're good for the dough. Well, anyways, that offer dropped right down to the bottom of my suspect list. And I might as well start earning my salary. How can we help, Mr. Davis? Well, I want to know the whereabouts of everyone in this house at the time the murder occurred. Establish everyone's alibis. Exactly. I'm particularly interested in what happened between the time Mr. Starkweather announced his new will and the time his body was discovered. And just how long was that? Several hours at least. Uh, oh, Miss Thompson, do you mind being our first interrogation? I'm awfully tired, but if you I You don't have to. have to, Paula. None of us do. What do you mean, dear? <laughs> what I mean is that Mr. Davis isn't even a police officer. We don't have to tell him the time of day. You're right, Jordan, but why would you refuse to cooperate unless you have something to hide? Now look, Simon. Don't start accusing me of murder unless you can prove it. <laughs> you know, Jordan. Uh, okay, if we can stop the tension here, it's getting a little bit high. Uh, you know, your cousin has a very good point. Uh, you want me to tell the police that everyone here, even your mother, cooperated except for you alone? All right, I'll answer dumb questions. Good choice. But first, I'm gonna have Mother lie down upstairs for a little bit until you're ready for her. She's really getting up in years and really needs some sleep. Thank you, son. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but I'm also not Nikki Anderson either. <laughs> <laughs> Don't excite yourself, Mother. Do you think you did a talus? No, but if I did, I'm sure there's a few underneath the sofa. 
I had a little accident with my pill bottle earlier. <sighs> Come on. And you're older than Nikki Anderson, too. <laughs> you can call when you're ready for us. Kathy and I will retire to my room. I'd like to read over the old will since it will remain the official one. Sure, Lois. Excuse us. I'd like to stay, since I wasn't here earlier. Hearing everyone's statements will give me a clearer picture of tonight. What happened? Oh, Miss Paula Thompson. Did you happen to notice anything that time code that I mentioned earlier? I was very disappointed by Great Uncle Simon's cloning announcement. I mean, normally I say yee-haw, but this time I said yee-naw. Anyways, <laughs> I can imagine why you might want to clone Luke Hobbick or Sawyer Rajeski or Lieutenant Sergeant Bushko, but you know what's better than all of this? Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Anyways, I spent most of my time at night in my room, but I did come downstairs once on a little errand. I was outside the kitchen door when I heard Minerva and that cute little kitchen made Nancy talking. What is the matter with you, girl? Have you left your mind in the other room? You haven't heard a word I said. I'm sorry, Minerva. I'm so confused. About what? Has that skis Jordan been bothering you again? Jordan? I mean, Mr. Starkweather? What makes you think that? When I walked in on the two of you earlier, you were standing mighty close together. Real lovey-dovey like. What was he saying to you? I think he wanted me to... to... To do something you didn't want to do? Well, yes, but it's not what you think. I'll say, if that boy tries anything, I will cut him down the sides. Minerva, no, he's not interested in me. I heard him with Miss Collins, he... I see. You lost your million and he lost interest in you. He's following the money straight to the Collins girl. He proposed to her, but she laughed at him. Serves him right, lazy people. <laughs> Don't call him that. You're still hung up on him, aren't you? Don't be stupid, Nancy. Jordan will spit you up and chew you... Right out, like you said to a million other girls I know of. <laughs> Maybe he's ready to settle down now. If Mr. Starkweather hadn't changed his will, he'd be free, free to- do what? Nothing. If we're finished, I'd like to go to my room now. Go on. Nancy? What? Lock your door. Excuse me, folks. That little scene in the foyer was what we in show business like to call a flashback. It shows a conversation that Paula overheard before the murder. Other character stories, or portions of them anyway, will be shown in flashback too, so I want to make sure that you really get it. Flashback. Got it. That's all. Watch this. Oh, you missed. Oh, but, uh, but this is Trent. It, did you ever notice anything suspicious earlier tonight? Suspicious? I suppose toting a gun around the house would be considered suspicious. A gun? Who has a gun? Uh, besides me. Paula Thompson, that's who. Claims she's really in the old days when she was starting to have the easy it would be to go through those French doors and shoot Mr. Starkweather. Uh, did she now? Ask for yourself. Oh, uh, well, if we could move past that. Is there anything else you have to notice? Well, I did hear a rather odd conversation between Mrs. Starkweather and Rufus. See, I was handing out candles in case of a light out, which turned out to be very useful, as you know. And while I was going downstairs and across the corridor, I saw him talking. Oh dear, I Miss, guess I have enough. Miss Starkweather! Yes! You scared me out of a year's throat! That's okay, ma'am. At our age, we do most of our growing sideways, don't we? <laughs> I certainly hope not. What are you doing with the television set? It doesn't look like a portable. It is now. I'm borrowing it from one of the guest rooms that ain't in use. Whatever for. You see, I ain't sleepy, so I thought I'd go watch some TV. But when I turned on the TV, everyone on every channel was green. <laughs> it looked like every channel was starring Kermit the Frog. <laughs> How disconcerting. You can see that again, whatever it means. <laughs> Are them breath mints? I wouldn't mind if you, I can still taste the kraut when to serve the staff for supper. These? Oh no, Rufus, you wouldn't want any of these. If you had took these, or took too many, they could kill you. In that case, I'll pass. You better make sure you're not leaving those lying around. Somebody could take a few by mistake and heal over dead. That's entirely possible. <laughs> what would you put on the death certificate? Cause of death. Bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a laughing matter. I'll be careful with them. You see, 
I just need every one of them. Rufus had an axe in the house? Yes, Master Simon. I have instructed him to shut him with firewood earlier. You know, I'm surprised you trust that man with an axe. Personally, I wouldn't trust him with a butter knife. I was simply relaying Mr. Stark with instructions. Uh, was there anything else of interest you happened to notice? Uh, just one, sir. Earlier tonight, I was coming from the kitchen when I saw Master Jordan at the door to Mr. Stark with his bedroom. The hall door, not that one. His behavior seemed somewhat furtive, and I got the impression he was about to enter when Miss Withers came out. It was apparent her unexpected appearance startled Master Jordan. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, uh, nothing. Mr. Stark Withers sleeping just in the doorway. How is he, Miss Withers? You don't need to know, that's what I'm paid to do. How much time do you think he has left? I think Mr. Starkweather will keep his heart beating through sheer determination long enough to sign that new will. Why, you misjudge me, Miss Withers. <laughs> I would never do anything like that to hurt Great Uncle Simon. I love him dearly. If that's a hint, forget about it. I know you and everyone else in this house would love to see Mr. Starkweather drop dead by daybreak. Including you. A million dollars is a fortune. A lot of people would kill for that much money. <laughs> if that's a hint, forget it. I'm gonna forget you said that. Good night, Jordan. Good night. <laughs> to kill his great uncle's life that would appear natural. Uh, I mean, of course, Mr. Benthrist told us that, but you could have also changed your mind. And killed him with a blood pressure cuff? That would be foolish. Hardly what you call by natural causes. <coughs> uh, that's true. The manner by which he was killed makes no sense at all, whoever did it. It's like the killer was flaunting the deed in our faces. And why would they do that? No, that's a good question, but, uh, Miss Willis, if you had to choose someone to be our killer, who would you pick? Off the record? Of course. That Paula Thompson girl, she's a little too goody-goody for my taste. Those southern girls really know how to pour a charm when they want it. But that Scarlet O'Hara, she can get pretty rubus when you get down to it. We have been told Cousin Paula has a gun. See what I mean? Her and Jordan were so desperate to get their hands on Mr. Starkweather's billions. I overheard them talking earlier this evening, right after Miss Van Zandt's new announcement about the new will. I didn't, they didn't see me through the corridor. <laughs> Well, what are we going to do except you and the Gritty? <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? That's all we can do, the Gritty. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be such a weird cousin, Jordan. That money rightfully belongs to us. There's got to be a way to get it. Maybe we could get, break the new will if we have Great Uncle Simon declared insane. I thought of that, but it won't work. If Kona was just a wild theory, we probably could, but it's been done. Great Uncle Simon's plan to be the first person to clone himself might be bizarre, but it isn't insane. We'd lose the case. And the judge would yell at us for doing the gritty too much. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But look how that Miss Van Zandt, she... What is it? What are you thinking? I'm thinking if you can't beat him, join him. What? I just thought of a way for Miss Van Zandt to put me on her team and we could all do the gritty together. What is it? <laughs> And for yourself, Jordan, if you'll excuse me, I need to go talk to that lawyer. If you can't do the gritty. Oh, now where would Kathy be? <laughs> It's true. Jordan did suggest we get married. It wasn't what you'd call a romantic proposal. It was more like a business proposition. 
But you are going to have access to billions. What did he have to offer you? Himself, I guess. In my opinion, that fortune hunter wouldn't be worth two cents. Uh, you know, uh, you do they need to turn it down, I fear so. Jordan is attractive in a smarmy sort of way, but any woman who would marry him would be a fool. And believe me, Mike, I am no fool. Uh, don't, don't worry. I knew that from the time we started working together. You were smart enough to volunteer to carry grandfather's clone. Look, Simon, once Mr. Starkweather decided to clone himself, nothing was going to change it. He was going to need to find a surrogate mother somewhere, so it might as well have been me. I understand. I just think the whole thing was, uh, weird as hell. <laughs> You're a lot nicer than the other heirs were. Uh, for example, if you don't mind sharing. Paula, for one. She hadn't given up hope of getting her hands on Mr. Starkweather's money. And how do you know that? I was in Lois's room with her when Paula knocked on the door. Paula asked to speak with her in private, and they didn't shut the door completely, so I couldn't help but overhear their conversation. We're very busy, Miss Thompson. Preparing the new will, sweetheart? Yes. Miss Van Zandt, you're a lawyer. Are you sure this whole clone of business is legal? You will lose your losses for practice, <laughs> won't you? The procedure will be performed in Belgium. As we told you, our laws don't apply there. What about ethics? Haven't lawyers been this far before for behavior that was unethical, if not illegal? What's your point? I want in on the deal. You can pay me from that trust fund to be the baby's nanny or whatever. I don't care what you name the position. If you refuse, I shall be forced to report you to the Bar Association. Isn't that what you call it? It is. Let me give you a little free legal advice, Miss Thompson. In the first place, if you were to accuse me of anything before the cloning procedure has been completed successfully, I will sue you for the $50,000 you're due to receive and everything you own, and I'll get it. In the second place, once the baby's on the way, I plan to close down my office. I shall devote all of my time to Kathy and little Simon's needs. At that point, it won't matter in the least if I'm to be disbarred. You don't have to be a lawyer to administer an estate. Anyone can do it. Oh. So, you see, young woman, your threats are meaningless. And as an officer of the court, I should report your feeble attempt at extortion to the police. I want to save it. Take your silly little southern self out of my sight, and I might be willing to forget it. All right. I'll go. You. 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 Oh, shoot. It's like I'm forgetting the line, Jean. You. Water. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, Mrs. Trent? Um, I was handing out candles in case of a blackout. I, I, I guess you should take one. That's very thoughtful of you, Jean. Thank you. I'll grab one for Kathy as well. Mrs. Withers? I'm not Mrs. Withers. I'm important enough you should know that. Well, you guys look the same to me. All right, Mrs. Trent. I'll go then. I hope I don't see you again. <laughs> What's her problem? Let's just say she's a poor loser. Miss Thompson played a race, and I trumped it, in a manner of speaking. I'll give this to Kathy. <laughs> All right, yeah, so Rufus, if I remember correctly, when the Kathy girl screamed and when she saw the body, you came running in through the front door. May I ask, what were you doing outside? Was I outside? Oh! Yeah, guess I was. I remember now. I had to go outside to switch the TV around because, you know, you're a bit hitchy. Yeah, uh, okay, we heard why for this. You did? Nurse show Travis fans around here. All the actors on your set were green. Sure was! Looked like the Martians had landed or something. Anyways, when I hooked up the new set from the guest room, the channels didn't come in too good. Everybody was fuzzy woozy as a woolly worm, so I went outside to turn the antennas around. Uh, on the roof, I presume? Well, it ain't gonna do much good in the basement now, would it, stupid? Don't you know how cable works? I'm surprised you do. Wow! I feel offended. Too bad. Anyways, I was outside when I heard the girl scream, bloody murder! MURDER! Even if it wasn't bloody. Well, what were, did you happen to see or hear anything outside? <laughs> I saw an owl and heard a bunch of bullfrogs. I tried to catch one, but they happened too fast. Rufus, I uh, meant humans. 
Oh, I saw Mr. Jordan sit on the patio. I don't know what he was doing out there, though. Um, did you happen to hear anyone else talking about the new will earlier tonight? Who oh. didn't? That's all Mr. Benso heard and Minerva could talk about. What were they saying? That it ain't fair that they deserve their millions, that they work hard for Mr. Stark Brother, <laughs> or whatever else. I don't really pay attention to Mr. Benson Hurst, but I don't really care. Uh, if we step back a moment, Mr. Benson Hurst and Minerva were talking at this time, correct? Oh, yeah. The more Minerva talked about it and the matter she got, and whoo, that woman's got a temper. She was about ready to storm Mr. Stark Brother's office room and give her a piece of her mind. Stop Minerva. You mustn't go in there. Who's gonna stop me? I shall if necessary. Special teams, special players, special plays. <laughs> is not the answer. Then what is? Have patience. Mr. Starkweather has it to sign the will. Perhaps he'll change his mind by morning. We should live so long. No, Minerva, he should live so long. Image? Because uh, I'm just a frat boy. Not a very good image, I will say, but if I remember correctly, we, you, we have heard that you were outside during the time of the murder. What were you doing outside? Just getting a brush of fresh air. Anything wrong with that? Uh, none of you remained outside. What do you mean? No. When I made a cursor examination of a crime scene, I happened to notice that Miss Withers had opened Mr. Starkweather's window just a couple inches to let in some of that exact fresh air. You know, Anyone could have walked in. Are you accusing me of killing Great Uncle Simon? No, no, I'm not accusing anybody yet, of course. But, you know, no, of course not. Why would I accuse you? You know, you seem so wholesome. Yeah. Okay, give me that. You Besides, from what we've heard, haunting someone else and doing their bidding is more your style. What do you mean? Well, you know. We've heard from numerous people that you do like to, you know, flirt with the ladies and all. But, you know, of course, obviously you didn't kill him. So who do you think did that? I'm not saying that you did it, but it might have been that little maid Nancy. So why her? The girl has a crush on me. <laughs> she, uh, she really likes me, and eventually she tried to flirt with me, and I got really scared. Oh, and then, really? <laughs> I didn't do anything, obviously. And I went around the house and I started talking to Miss Withers outside the kitchen. Can I do something for you, Miss Withers? I just needed fresh water to put by Mr. Ben Mr. Starkweather's bedside table. That poor man. When he lost his breath and had the attack in the living room, I realized what you meant when you said the slightest shock could prove to be fatal. Exactly. The slightest shock. His bell! I must go. We wouldn't want anything to happen to him, would we? Thank you, Jean, for investing in the crystal. That is a break. <laughs> even think he noticed me. Well, then he must have received two surprises. One, to learn that Mr. Starkweather had given you a million dollars. Then two, to learn he didn't care at all and it took it all away. Well, three, now you're wealthy again. Oh, Mr. Starkweather, I was thrilled to be told your grandfather had left me even $50,000. With that, I could go to college like you and get a good education. Well, now you can do anything you want, Nancy. What do you want to do? Um, I don't know. I haven't been thinking about myself much. Who's been on your mind, Nancy? 
Um, a certain Jordan Sterkwell, perhaps. <laughs> what? Who told you that? Jordan himself. For one, he even implied you might be willing to kill for him. What? How could he even say such a thing? I'm sorry to hurt you, Nancy, but now you understand what Jordan's like. Total douchebag. I guess I knew that. Minerva tried to warn me. I even saw him propose to Miss Collins, but she turned him down, then later laughed when she told her friend Miss Van Zandt. I was taking fresh towels to the guest bathrooms when I heard them talking. You think Jordan is cold-hearted? Well, Miss Collins is just as bad as he is. Can you believe it? Those soulful gazes might work on some innocent young thing like that named Nancy. But you learn quick enough that I'm no pushover. I wish I had done this yet. It's time Jordan met his match. I could tell Nancy about a few of the other maids that have worked here in the past, but his playboy days are soon to be over. Why do you say that? Up until now, Mr. Starkweather has given Jordan, as well as Fiona, young Simon, and Paula a generous allowance. Once he passes on, the $50,000 will be the last they receive of the Starkweather fortune. They're all going to have to learn how to work for a living. Simon's almost out of school. He'll be fine. But the others? They'll run out of their money in no time. Then what kinds of jobs will they get? Can you picture Paula on the pole at a strip club? Or Jordan seeing <laughs> Magic Mike? And what will Fiona do? Be the bouncer? you threw everywhere? <laughs> um, no, dear, I'm fine, but thank you. Mr. Davis, I want you to know that my Jordan could have been done. What was done to Uncle Simon? He was in my room with me all evening. No, that isn't true, and I can tell you this. Mr. Jordan Starkville had told himself he was outside, and then, obviously, I saw you in here with Mr. Benson and Miss Withers, whatever you're doing at that time. Maybe that was the other night he was with me. Maybe it was. Now I know why Jessica Fletcher never believes the suspects on murder she wrote. It's so easy to get confused. Again with the writer. You know, she's not even a detective, right? Uh, but anyways, concentrate tonight. Was there anything suspicious you have to notice? Suspicious? I don't know. I did see Uncle Simon with that horrible thing wrapped around his neck. I'd say that's suspicious. <laughs> You people, oh my god. <laughs> like means before that, Fiona. Before? Yeah. Let me think. I don't know if this is the type of thing that you, that you want, but... Yeah? It was right after we were, we were told about the new will. I had gone upstairs and was walking past the secretary and the housekeeper. They were typing quite loudly, so I couldn't help but overhear. What are you doing in my room, Miss Trent? Uh, nothing. Um, I suppose you're very pleased with yourself. Why do you say that? It worked out just as you planned. I don't know what you mean. I think you do. You've been bringing in magazines all from town for Mr. Starkler to see. You've been doing it for months. What magazines? Don't play dumb. Those magazines and news articles, they have one thing in common. Articles about cloning. I think you planted the idea in Mrs. Starkwater's head to clone himself. What if I did? There are no laws against sharing ideas, are there? I'm sure your lawyer friend would say so, since you're in this together. But that doesn't mean it's right. What I think you're trying to do is horrendous. To be perfectly frank, I couldn't care less what you think. Get out. Trying to give orders already. Fine, I'll leave. But let me tell you one thing, young woman. You are not the queen bee yet, and you won't be until Mr. Starfire signs the dotted line. Assuming that ever happens. <laughs> Finally, someone with a brain. <coughs> Kathy told me about Mrs. Trent's accusations, about her engineering the whole cloning business, possibly with my help. Honestly, I was surprised that Mrs. Starkweather reported their conversation accurately. Oh, don't worry. I'm just as surprised as you are. Well, is it true? Did you really give Grandpa the idea to clone himself? I don't really think that's relevant to the case at hand, Simon. And even if it was, we weren't breaking any laws, were we, Mr. Davis? No laws that I can think of. So, should we focus on the law that was broken? I'm referring to the murder, of course. You're right again, Miss Van Zandt. 
Uh, about that. Is there any information that might be able to volunteer for us? I will tell you this. Earlier this evening, I was going down to the kitchen to fetch a pot of coffee from Minerva for Kathy and I. It was evident we would be staying up late. I didn't see Minerva in the kitchen, but I saw Rufus, and he was talking to Fiona Starkweather. Their conversation was very peculiar. Good heavens, what are you doing with an axe? I brought it in from the wood pile. I sharpened it up too. Wanna see? Goodness, no, put it away. I better, before I hurt somebody, or even kill them. That's a horrible thought. Ain't it though? I get those sometimes. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I, I see you still got your poison bills. Digitalis isn't poison, it's a stimulant. You just have to be careful not to take too many. Oh no. You had a lot more in that bottle when I saw you last. Have you gone down an overdose? I think I can figure out the mouth to mouth stuff. If you bring those lips any closer, I'll grab the axe out of your hand and chop them off. I'd rather kiss a fish. Good thing I am, ma'am. <laughs> Please stop. Just trying to help, Miss Starkweather. Well, don't. Some fates are worse than death. And I can assure you that I'm fine. I just had a little accident with them in the living room earlier. You better hope Minerva don't find any. She cooks Mr. Starkweather's meals and she mighty mad at him right now. What are you suggesting? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Is there anything I can help you in? Well, I came down here to see if Minerva had any of those delicious hors d'oeuvres left over. I can look. <laughs> Never mind, I've lost my appetite. <laughs> Uh, please, please, one time, let there be someone safe again. Oh no. Damn it! <laughs> <sighs> Mrs. Starkweather's meals, what did you want to know about them? Well, who did he dine with? Did he eat the same food as everyone else? Mr. Starkweather was on a very restricted diet. Low fat, low sodium, low entertainment. <laughs> I had to prepare his meals separately. Why? Do you think there's something wrong with my cooking? Oh, no, 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 not at all. That plague of, you know, my wife, whenever she tries to make lamb, it never comes out right. It's always burnt or way undercooked. But the way you made it tonight was absolutely perfect. Well, I have been told I have terrific legs. Don't so... get that far. I have a wife. <laughs> What's the problem? Oh, uh, don't worry. You've already answered my question. Well, you know, if you may, if you do remember, before the blackout happened, do you remember who was in the kitchen at all? Before the blackout? Yeah. Let me think. I was in the pantry preparing meals for the following morning when the lights had gone out. I had pulled out the candle Mrs. Trent had given me and... Minerva, Nancy, is everyone all right? I hear and I'm fine. I was, I was doing my chore when I saw the lights go out. I was with George, I mean, I was in my room when everything went happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ben so heard Strap pay the light bill again. Keep that up and I'll forget to pay your wages. What the no, blazes is going on in here? I think the power went out. Can we get a round of applause for Miss Trent? Uh, Yay! No! Uh, Benson Harris, can you get the lights back on? That's what I came to find out. If you guys are slop bickering. Not Bell, jeez. Oh. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, Mr. Benson Harris, can you help me get the lights back on, please? Yes, the silver record is right over here. <coughs> I, I really hate the dark. Good Too thing bad, it so is. so sad. Handle before? Give me a minute. You got this. <laughs> Rough this, I'm going to kill you. Do it again. Do it again. <gasps> Genius! <laughs> yeah. I get back to my tour now. <laughs> I swear to God, that man is vapid. Why did he even come in? My wallet floor is dirty. <laughs> Not really. Why Mr. Starkwater doesn't fire him, I'll never know. Me neither, man.
Mike, any luck finding the alcohol? No, it wasn't there. <laughs> and I found some other stuff. You can't have that yet. NRTC recruit. But um, <laughs> I did have to find the evidence. You know, that's a bit more important right now. Uh, it was there, but I just wish I had more. You know, it could take weeks to get those results, and by the time by that happens, the will could be probated, and the killer could get away with a million dollars or more. I had a nephew that one time. After 2005, he's just gone. I wish we could have learned more from the suspect's testimonies. It could be anybody. Yeah, they were so busy trying to make each other look bad, and sometimes themselves. They didn't reveal too much about themselves. No, sometimes it's just the slightest... Wait, Simon, move your feet. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's just... Yeah, that's what it is. It was so angry, Simon. I barely noticed it. Simon, I know who killed your grandfather. Who? How? Don't worry about it right now. Go get Benzers and find everyone you can and bring them in here as quickly as you can. Uh, yes, sir. Minerva sent me this huge like a drink. Uh, never mind that. Get everybody in here on the double. Yes, sir. Uh, I forgot the sandwich bags again. No, the police chief fought to mine my pocket saying along with it, too. I don't think he'll mind that. Not at all. What's happening? What's going on? All right, everyone, 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 please take a seat. Take a seat, you can. The intro to my Mario Kart game. I don't care about your game. Sit down. Who left their drink? Don't worry about that. Just put Names. it back and sit down. Names. Uh, this oh, man looks like running cats. It's very late, Mr. Davis, or very early, depending on which way you want to look at it. If nobody else is going to ask, I will. Well, how did you call us together at this hour? No, it is quite late. I will admit, I am very tired. I'm very tired. So will Simon. But I think you will all rest a lot easier knowing who killed the great Simon Starkweather the <gasps> what? what? first. You mean you figured out who killed poor great Uncle Simon? Don't give me those crocodile tears, ma'am. And yes, I will show you in just a couple minutes. I'm amazed, Mike. How did you figure it out? Well, first, I had to answer the question that had bothered me from the very beginning. Why was Mr. Starkweather killed in such a weird way? You know, it would have been so easy to make it seem he had died of natural causes. Something Jordan had mentioned in Miss Withers while, sit down, you've caused enough trouble already. But, uh, obviously, uh, if I make it back to where I was, Miss Fiona Starkweather could have given Mr. Jordan some of her digitalis to trigger a heart attack. And then, also, Miss Withers could have done the same thing with a hypodermic needle by injecting a blood uh, air bubble into Mr. Starkweather's bloodstream. But, so why would the killer decide to put a blood pressure cuff around his neck and inflate it to the maximum? Well, that answer is so obvious, I barely, I feel stupid for not seeing it earlier. Might want to ask what that is? Well, obviously, when the blood pressure cuff was put on him, he was already dead. <gasps> Wait, what? what? How? Am I right, Miss Van Zandt? Oh, I, I should know. know. You really are very clever, Mr. Davis. It had to have been you. No, you and I were right here when the blackout occurred. You went to go find Mr. Starkweather, now I went to go find Mr. Bensoners. Obviously, when the killer must have been in there moments before you went in, and then when the killer found, saw you coming in, he must have rushed into Mr. Miss Withers' room, and then you found Mr. Starkweather, obviously, dead. Maybe I did do That's what I thought, too. But why would you put a cuff around his neck? Well, as our able detective here has surmised, I walked into the room, and it looked like Mr. Starkweather had died. I figured that it was a heart attack, so the murderer made it seem that death was natural causes. I wasn't gonna let my murder, my employer's murder get away scot-free though. I knew that under the circumstances, the coroner would have no reason to inspect the body and the police would have no reason to open an investigation. So I saw the blood pressure cuff, I put it around his neck and I inflated it to the maximum. Then I rolled him out here. Well, you know, that little ploy was incredibly misleading, Mrs. Van Zandt. You know, it distracted me from the main, really, the main element I was supposed to focus on. Instead of trying to figure out who killed him, I was trying to figure out why he was killed that way. But once I figured that part of it out, everything else fell into place. Well, if you figured out the murder, don't the ends seem to have justified the means? No, I agree. And I think the police will agree too, even though you are guilty of tampering with evidence at a crime scene. If not, I'm on good terms with the local judges. That is true. Wait a minute. How do you know that she didn't kill Great Uncle Simon? You must have not been listening a whole lot tonight. You know, <laughs> obviously, Miss Van Zandt has absolutely no motive to kill the man. <laughs> Idiot. Oh, yeah! <laughs> no, don't keep us in suspense, Mike. Tell us who did kill Mr. Starkweather. I'll do one thing better. I'll show you. 
if I can just remember, what circuit breaker is it back here? What? Perfect. Then I go over here. Huh? Wonderful. Right. Uh, please. I think you do all have the candles that Mrs. Trent distributed earlier tonight. Take them out and light them, please. I didn't get a candle. Help. Oh, you're going to have to sit in the dark. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. You'll live. Oh. Potato chips on my hands. <laughs> This is no time for celebration. Well, obviously, I've done this here to figure out who the true murderer is. There was something so insignificant one of you were doing when I was investigating you that it was just one action, rubbing one thumbnail against the other. Obviously, that must have been done by nervousness, triggered by guilt, so it seems. Because on the floor in front of the sofa, I noticed some drops of red wax. And on Mr. Stark with his rope, I noticed some red drops as well. Obviously, it wasn't blood. There could have only been one other thing as well in this house. Some red wax. <coughs> and obviously, there's red wax just everywhere, it seems. So there was only one red candle. Only one red candle in this entire massive mansion. And obviously, only one of you is holding that a candle tonight. Fiona Starkweather. Oh my god, I'm oh my god. Oh. How did she do it? There could have been other red candles. There wasn't. I remember when I was putting away the candles after Christmas that there was only one in the box. Is this all the evidence you have to offer the police? This candle? Uh, no. I do have one more thing. You know, when the lights were on earlier and I was walking around, I noticed some light scratches on your wrist. Those must have been made by Mr. Starkweather, no doubt, as he was struggling for his life. And I bet these skin samples I managed to dig out from underneath his fingernails they are very short, so it was quite difficult, but I managed to get them. These will match, these skin samples will match your DNA exactly. Don't worry, it'll be quite easy too. I've met quite a few DNA experts in the last six months. I don't suppose you'd be okay putting those skin samples and cloning them, putting the new me in prison, would you? Nope. I don't think so. Well, I didn't think so. I guess the only mistake I made was trying to cross a lawyer. Well, Miss Van Zandt. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about this? You tell us exactly what happened, because we're all dying to know how you did it. Well, I guess I should. You already figured out the main details anyways. I was furious with Uncle Simon for building up my hopes and then crashing them to the ground. I thought a man that cruel doesn't deserve to live. So I listened at his door until I knew that he was alone. So I went inside, and he was sitting in his wheelchair, still awake. So I went up to his face, and I told him what he was planning to do was monstrous. I told him that he deserved to die. I told him that I was going to kill him. And he was so, so he was terrified. And he rolled backwards in his little wheelchair and knocked him to the bedside table, which knocked over his reading lamp and the pitcher of water. The pitcher of water fell on top of the reading lamp and short-circuited and blew up the circuit breaker. Well, yeah, that's obvious enough. You didn't cause it. You're not smart enough to. <laughs> Wow. That was mean. That's pretty great, man. Oh yeah. awesome. She's just an old lady. Oh, don't worry. Jordan, <laughs> Look, I mean, that was I'm a full farm tree, does it? Like, that was like, I was crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, so skipping. Well, please, continue, Fiona. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to cause the, out, the outage. It almost ruined everything, actually. But I remembered I had my candle and my matches and my purse. So I grabbed it out and I lit it. Surprisingly, and I held that in one hand while I grabbed the mask with the other. I put it on top, I put it on his face, and I put it really tight over his nose and his mouth. He couldn't breathe, of course, and so he tried to make a feeble attempt to escape by ringing his little bell and giving me a few insignificant scratches, as you noticed. That is probably when I dropped a few things of wax on his robe. Well, that uh, certainly a good story. So, obviously, when he was rolled out, you were just as surprised to see the blood pressure cut around his neck. I was. But what could I do? I would have loved to kill you too, Miss Van Zandt, but I didn't dare to try. Until now! <gasps> I've got nothing to lose, so don't anybody move! Whoa, whoa. Don't try anything you might regret. Too late for that advice, Mr. Davis. Get up. 
You're coming with me. Where would we go? The bridge is washed out. You see, I remember the tree that Simon was talking about that fell over. Simon, give me your keys. Oh, it's a nice car. Could you drive? Let's hope she doesn't crash it. Please don't. You know, you really won't be able to get away. Oh, really? I believe I have. You see, all of your guys' cars are parked on this side of the bridge. It will take you hours to walk into town and notify the police. By then, I'll be long gone. What about me? I would have committed the perfect crime, well, murder, if, uh, if you hadn't interfered. What, uh, what do you think I'm gonna do with you? Nothing, if I can help it. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. Stand right there. Just hold on. You burned me! Consider it a preview of the afterlife. Ah, please, put your hand behind your back. <laughs> Thanks. Mike, remind me to pay you a big bonus. Oh, don't worry. We'll get past that marine office later. Well, you're gonna spend a long time behind bars. Anything to say for yourself? A long time? Hopefully I can start a bridge club. <laughs>